Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy David and I'm coming at you with part two of the E3 wrap up for the free play mode. And this conference we're going to get into it was done by Microsoft at 1230 Eastern Standard Time and 930 Pacific. And I watched this press conference at work and man, Microsoft went in so hard. They went in unbelievably hard. They they were true to their word. They they kept to the theme of a lot of first party IPs, new IPs, indie games, and they were very sparingly using the third party IPs to build up their uh, console as they would have in previous years. They they just went really hard and kudos to them. Uh, I'm going to start off from top to bottom because, wow, they did deliver a lot of content and as you can see here what I'm playing is Mass Effect and it's not on Xbox 360 it's on the Xbox one and I'm gonna get into that in just a little bit but first I'm gonna lead off it the game that they let off with which is Halo 5 Guardians and that is coming out this fall October 27 2015 so there's no need to wait around for much longer better get your pre-orders in if you want to get those bonuses but man they went really hard with this uh, they revealed a little bit about the story. You're going to be playing as Spartan Lock and as the Master Chief, and you're going to lead. Each Spartan is going to have their own distinct four-man squad that they lead. So it's going to be Spartan Lock and three of his boys, and Master Chief and three of his boys in a four-player co-op campaign mode. So that's definitely going to be interesting. As they said that you can drop in and out at will, like you could with Gears of War back on Xbox 360. And another mode that they introduced for multiplayer is the Warzone mode. It's going to be 24 players in total plus bots. So that's going to be proven to be an interesting dynamic because we saw something similar with uh, Titanfall when they introduced 6v6 versus plus bots. So adding bots to the dynamic is a proven commodity because people initially were down on it when Titanfall was first revealed, but then once they got into the game the bots only seem to add more of a, a dynamic a better dynamic actually to the game the next game we're gonna get into is a new IP by Microsoft and it's gonna be done by KJ Mfune and the makers of Metroid Prime if you don't know who KJ Mfune is he is the designer behind Dead Rising Mighty Number no. 9 Mega Man the guy's done it all. He he's essentially a Capcom stalwart and a Capcom legend. And this new IP looks to be pretty interesting. They didn't show any gameplay footage of it, but it's called Recore, so definitely be on the lookout for more information regarding that. But it's nice to see Microsoft revealing some new IPs at E3 rather than rest on their lures because they do have a long way to fight back if they hope to catch Sony. And then here comes the reason why I am playing Mass Effect on my Xbox One. Uh, they announced backwards compatibility for the Xbox One for Xbox 360 games. And for Xbox preview uh, people, it's going to be available now, like a small sampling of first party games is going to be available now for you to play. And but they are going to have a hundred games released by this coming holiday so man that's a big game changer for Microsoft especially if the emulation proves to be stable that's a game changer that is a huge huge game changer because I know lots of people have held on to their Xbox 360s because they don't want to get rid of their games they have these huge huge libraries that they've built up over the last 10 years and they're very hesitant to get rid of them so Kudos to Microsoft for working on that for the past year and then unveiling it today at E3. That was definitely a mic drop moment. And I hope that, wow, I just hope that they bring out the most popular of the most popular games. And everything is everything. Wow, that's just crazy. And then they revealed another game changer. And it's essentially their new Microsoft elite controller and what's so special about this controller is that it's fully customizable you can customize your 
trigger sticks, you can customize the analog sticks, you can customize the D-pad, you can customize the face buttons. This thing is 100% customizable and it's crazy. It looks great. I can only imagine the various uses that people will put this through like fighting games, flying games, flight simulators, driving games, shooters. Man, this is like the ultimate controller here and it is the hardcore gamers wet dream I kid you not because you see when you go on eBay or when you go on these modding sites you do see these mods for these controllers and this took that idea and ramped it up so now you have a 100% fully customizable controller at your fingertips so definitely kudos to uh, Microsoft for that and then Microsoft bought Fallout 4 onto the, the main stage and while Fallout 4 was announced last night at Bethesda Soft's E3 press conference they did add a little bit more detail and another game changer in that any mods that are created for Fallout 4 on the PC will be able to be used with the Xbox One version of Fallout 4 so that's that's just crazy I can I've seen the Fallout 3 and the Fallout New Vegas mods and what they've done with the, the community has done is absolutely brilliant. I've seen some great mods, I've played some of them and they're great. I can't wait to see those on Xbox 360, well Xbox One version of Fallout 4 because I, it, and the fact that you don't have to pay for these mods and you're essentially creating your own DLC and you're gonna see a lot of new storylines and you're gonna see a lot of new dialogue and you're gonna see a whole wealth of creativity that was only exclusive to the PC universe show up on a console that's just amazing and the next thing that uh, was shown at the Microsoft press conference was EA came out and they talked about well Peter Moore came out for EA and he talked about EA access and what it was if you don't know what EA access is what it is is a streaming service, streaming online service that allows you to play the latest and greatest EA games first before they actually hit the market for five dollars a month and that's not too bad if you're d deeply into uh, EA games like that and they also announced that the EA uh, access program will be free for this week of E3 so if you were wanting to check it out without investing any kind of money now is the time to do that they also announced Plants vs. Zombies 2 Garden Warfare so I know there's a lot of Plants vs. Zombies fans out there I know a lot of you on my friends list and a lot of you have subscribed to me are fans of that game so definitely look on be on the lookout for that it's coming in spring of 2006 and they didn't show any gameplay of that I was a little bit disappointed but it's nice to know that it is coming out in a few short months. It's not a year away or a year and a half away. It's coming out this spring. So if all you Plants vs. Zombie heads out there are listening, this is your game coming up. And next, they showed a little bit of Forza 6. And by the trailer that they showed, it's going to be amazing. They've added so much detail to this game. They added night racing. They added weather effects. They added... Formula 3 racing, they added GT series racing, they added kart series racing, they've added so much. And with the details that leaked before E3 that there were going to be 450 cars, more than 450 cars right out of the box. As well as 29 locations and wow, that's just double the size of Forza 5 straight out. Double the size of Forza 5 straight out of the box. So and you know there's going to be DLC content tracks and DLC car packs so it's just going to make this game it's taken an already solid Forza which is Forza 5 which launched with the Xbox One two years ago and it's turning up to 11 so that's going to be something that I definitely want I know a lot of you race heads out there new I know you're listening Forza 6 baby can't wait and next thing they talked about was uh, they revealed a little bit of a CG trailer for Dark Souls 3 which kind of surprised me not that it is coming out because everybody kind of expected that Dark Souls 3 was coming out they didn't really show any gameplay but what did surprise me is that 
Form Software chose to debut this at the, uh, Microsoft's press conference when the Soul series, Bloodborne, Dark Souls, uh, Demon's Souls has traditionally been recognized as a Sony PlayStation platform game even though the Dark Souls 1 and 2 did come out on the Xbox 360 so that's kind of a big coup for Microsoft to get these guys to show their latest game in the Souls series on their press conference so man then they showed a little bit more of the division the story looks to have changed up just a little bit but uh the division is coming out in 2016 with an exclusive beta to the xbox one and the pc this december so if you want to get your hands on the beta of the division head over head on over to ubisoft's website and definitely sign up for that that's something that I'm definitely going to do and I can't wait for. And the next game that uh, they showed was Rainbow Six. And man, did that look great. I'm a huge, huge fan of Rainbow Six and the game looked great. And in addition, they also said that Rainbow Six Vegas 1 and 2 will be backwards compatible this coming holiday. And that if you purchase the new Rainbow Six, you will get Rainbow Six 1 and 2 Vegas for free. So, wow, they are really knocking it out the park here with the Xbox One. They're giving you lots of incentives to buy an Xbox One. And free games, backwards compatibility is just insane. So, yes, I'm flipping through some notes here, pardon me, because they did get to a lot of stuff. Uh, and the next game they showed is a Windows 10 and Xbox One exclusive. It's called Gigantic. It is a mobile style game. It is free to play and it is available this coming August in beta. So all you MOBA fans out there, League of Legends, Dota, this is something for you because the Xbox One already has Smite beta going on. So if you definitely need another MOBA to add to your stack, look at Gigantic because it does look interesting. Even though I'm not a fan of MOBAs, for those that who... For those that play this style of game, definitely check it out. Let me know how it is because even though I don't like to play them, I do like to watch them because they do make for interesting spectator sports. Uh, the next thing they showed at the press conference was a lot of indie games, lots and lots of indie games. They uh, saw that Sony was pimping indie games left and right, and so Microsoft decided that they needed to get on the indie game wagon. Sorry about that. People messaging me on Facebook, but... They needed to get on the indie game wagon and they did announce a few exclusive indie games coming out to the Xbox One console. And the first one they announced was uh, Ashen is an Xbox One exclusive. It is a survival game. It looks to be kind of quasi survival, survivalist type of game. Uh, the one that everybody will be talking about is Cuphead. Man, this game has some real, real slick sick animations 1930 style cartoon graphics it is one to watch and it is an xbox one exclusive as well as a windows 10 exclusive so you can only get that on the pc and on the xbox one console uh the the next thing they announced was the indie game preview system and this is similar to the steam's early access system in that you can purchase a game while it's in development but in addition you can also free preview a game before you decide to put money down on it while it's still in development so Microsoft ripped one off from Steam and Valve and hey it's a good idea because indie games are the thing this year people are using them to bolster their library Sony's doing it Steam's doing it because Steam is built off of indie gaming so it only makes sense that Microsoft would go to it with their own early access program uh, the next thing they announced was, uh, what else did they announce? Uh, Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Phil Spencer made it seem like it's a, an exclusive, not a holiday exclusive, but an exclusive outright. So we'll wait to see more information as it comes out, whether it's a timed exclusive due out for Xbox this coming holiday, November 10th, which is also the same date that Fallout 4 drops, if you didn't watch my video last night but the game looked amazing it looked the graphics were great you can tell this game was built from the ground up for the next gen consoles rather than cross-platform uh what else did they announce uh oh another xbox one exclusive is the 
rare catalog rare is bringing out a catalog collection of their games and it's not going to be a small collection either it's going to be a 30 game collection and that's crazy you're going to have some Jet Force Gemini. The game that really surprised me that they got up on there was RC Pro Am because Nintendo published published that back on the NES days. So, wow, kudos to Rare and Microsoft for getting their hands on RC Pro Am because RC Pro Am back on the Nintendo days was great, and it's going to introduce a lot of these younger gamers to games that they would have never played before or only heard of, and Rare it's going to introduce gamers that ha that only came aboard uh in the last 10 years or so to a time when rare essentially ruled the world like they were the development studio for nintendo they were the shit back in the day so it's going to introduce a lot of younger gamers to those games it's gonna reignite the spark of nostalgia and gamers like me who remember rare for the nintendo and super nintendo and nintendo 64 days so can't wait for that uh what else is there hmm rare is also working on an mmo called uh it's a pirate themed mmo and it looks interesting it looks like sid meyer's pirates but instead of a single player experience it's going to be a shared world multi player online experience so definitely look for that in 2016 and they did announce more about Fable Legends. It is an Xbox One and Windows 10 exclusive, naturally, but it is going to be free to play. So definitely look out for that. The open beta is in currently sign up, so definitely sign up for the beta if you want to be a part of that. And free to play is always a good thing. So kudos to Microsoft for making Fable Legends free to play. But I hope it's not pay to win. I really hope not. Uh, what else? Oh, another thing they announced with the uh, Fable Legends is that there will be cross-platform play. So, if you're on the PC or if you're on the Xbox One playing Fable Legends, you will be able to play each other. In addition to uh, that, what happens in one game will happen in the other game. So, if you have it on Xbox One and PC, if you do something on Xbox One, it'll carry over to your PC gaming experience. So, there's no need to worry about oh if i have this character on xbox one i can't bring him over to the pc or if i have this on pc i won't be able to bring him over here to the xbox one so that's real good so another thing is uh they announced that the xbox one is going to have the ability well yeah you can stream your xbox games via windows 10 to the oculus rift so that's going to be a big thing because microsoft was not going to bring out their own VR headset for the Xbox One. So this is a huge deal for you people who were bound and determined to use VR. You will be able to play your Xbox One games via Windows 10 because Windows 10 is going to be free for a year. So if you don't take advantage of that, that's on you. Uh, what else? They showed some excellent HoloLens footage for Minecraft and that blew me away. I, I saw the initial reveal of the HoloLens and it was already a great thing, but when they showed Minecraft today, wow, that's all I can say is wow. And then they showed the granddaddy of them all to end the show, and that was Gears of War. They did briefly announce that they are bringing a Gears of War Ultimate Edition remaster to the Xbox One, and it's coming out August 25th, but the big thing they showed was Gears of War 4, and even though it's over a year away, which is holiday 2016 which I'm assuming is October and November man even for a game that's roughly 18 months away it looked good and it looked that there were two new characters that they were focusing on and it didn't look like they were focusing in on the traditional enemies so I definitely want to see how this game pans out going forward I want to know what you guys think so leave a comment in the comment section below if you're feeling creative make a video if you like this video or if you hate this video, thumbs up or thumbs down it. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, please do so and tell your friends to do so too. This is David from the Free Play Mode wrapping up with the part two of the E3 wrap up Microsoft press conference. Hope you have a good afternoon. I will see you after the Sony press conference. Peace. I'm out for now.